Hey everybody, welcome to this video, welcome to this how to Mavic Mini and in this video I'm gonna show you how to take 360 pictures with this little guy. I'm going to use the Mavic Mini but this guide is valid for every single drone so if you have a drone with the camera but it doesn't have the automatic mode to take 360 pictures because there are some drones that have it like the Mavic Pro series but this one doesn't and I thought like do we really need it? So here I'm gonna show you how to take 360 pictures uh, controlling manually your drone. Before starting I want to be honest with you this needs hours and this needs a lot of work so if you thought that it will be an easy peasy thing that you will take like five minutes to take a 360 picture and to have a good result sorry so you can just subscribe to the channel and close the video because of course if you want a really good result you need to put a lot of work in it and a lot of time in it so here we are the first thing I want to go fast as fast as possible uh, the first thing you have to do is to unlock for who is using uh, Mavic Mini is to unlock the vertical uh, plus 20 degrees of the gimbal because by default on Mavic Mini it's not possible to raise the gimbal the camera above zero degrees but it's possible to go and enable this in the settings I'm gonna show you this here so just uh, uh, touch the three dots above on the um, top right go on commands and here you can see uh, settings of um, advanced settings of stabilization probably I'm using it in Italian and here you can see the voice allow to rotate the camera above and the other thing I advise you is to enable the grid because it will help you with the positioning of the camera um, while you are shooting so you can do this also here uh, go on camera advanced settings and here you can enable the grid of course also the um, the pointer regarding the number of the pictures to be taken there isn't a really precise number you will have between 35 and 50 pictures per, per photo actually with a good overlap you will be around 38 37 pictures so this is uh, more or less the number but of course if you are not sure you can have more overlap or less overlap uh, in any case you will be around uh, between 35 and 50 pictures okay and now let's go outside and take these pictures the first thing that you have to do is the surrounding awareness of course as you can take a look around it's uh, uh, it's uh, there are a lot of trees a lot of uh, um, places where the drone can just uh, crash and uh, stuff like this but here above me I can see that there is uh, an interesting spot so what I'm gonna do is to uh, fly in that direction and then just go away or I can use um, uh, one of these spots uh, but of course you have to be aware uh, of everything also out of the zone where you are making fly the drone so we are going above and uh, see what's happening above us take off can take a look around to know what's around you what you want to avoid if there is something wrong or if there is something that you don't want to shoot uh, so in this way you'll be able to uh, set in first um, the settings for your picture uh, and stuff like this okay so let's go let's go a bit to the sea just a little bit higher like 50 meters it will be enough okay set the cinematic mode in this way the drone will uh, perform like smoother movements smoother things everything is lower and it's uh, it's better to shoot 360s also because you don't want it to uh, to move really fast and uh, do something wrong and the first thing I want to tell you is to set your own 
um, settings for the picture. I'm gonna use everything automatic here and uh, the only thing I have to do and I uh, advise you to do if you're using automatic settings is to lock your exposure um, at the bottom right because in this way even if you will uh, turn around and uh, take a look around you will not have differences of exposure with uh, between the pictures and you will not have like the really uh, for example i'm going to show you if i will unlock the exposure it will be really dark here and uh, when i go on the other side where there is less light it will be really light so it will be uh, a problem uh, for the um, for the program to stitch properly the pictures uh, so for this reason, I'm gonna lock the exposure in this way. It's a bit too dark there, but at least I will not have all the white area here. So it's good in this way. Uh, and let's start to shoot. You, ha you have to shoot all the pictures around the drone. So uh, starting from the above, of course, you have to go to plus 20 degrees and start to take pictures. Um, Look at exposure with the grid that we will help you. Uh, for example, as you can see, there is a small building on the right side of this picture. So I'm just gonna rotate the drone and to see that small building at in around uh, one third of the other pictures. So this is um, where the grid will help you a lot. Let's do, take a picture here. And what you have to do is to take all the pictures around uh, the drone. You will have to rotate the drone without moving it. Use only the stick which rotates it and the gimbal wheel. There are different steps that we will follow now on the computer and basically they are stitching, editing, uh, color correction if you need it and injecting 360 metadata. My softwares of choice are Microsoft Eyes for the stitching, Photoshop CC19 for the editing, Lightroom for color correction and Exif Fixer for injecting 360 metadata. So now you have all these pictures, transfer them on your computer and let's start the stitching. Okay, so here we have the, your pictures and uh, they are 44. Actually, uh, I took a lot of overlap and I have 44 pictures. I'm gonna use uh, Microsoft Eyes. It is possible to stitch these pictures also using uh, Lightroom, but actually I don't really like the way it uh, stitches these pictures. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna use this program because first of all, it's free. So yeah, no need to thanks me. And uh, it does a really, really, really good job. So you just have to select all the pictures, drag them into the program. And you can see here, there are four steps to, uh, which are import, stitch, crop and export. Here, there are all your pictures. You can just take a look at them and um, do various, uh, if, you, if you need to change some pictures, if you took more than one picture per place, um, it's up to you. Uh, you don't have to change anything yeah? like there is the structure panorama so you can choose the various rows but this is not something you have to do you have to do simple panorama so don't touch anything and click on next the program will do all the job by itself it will align the images it will compose um, to calculate the overlap and do all the work on its on its own you just have to wait around a minute more or less okay here we are here you can have the first look at your 360 picture it's uh, of course it did a really really good job usually the panorama is already leveled as you can see with the with the sea level it's almost perfectly leveled actually i see a bit of problem here but you can just drag and fix the the orientation of the picture if you need it let's uh, let's keep it in this way i'm going to to adjust it later using Kula. Okay, and here in this um, in the stitch 
pro uh, like face let's say you decide also the orientation of the picture which will be the first frame uh, which will be shown when you open the picture so let's let's set it in this way I wanna I wanna take a look at the shipyard okay leave everything automatic here uh, the projection of course will be spherical click on next and it will um, compose the panorama and here we are this is our picture we can just uh, we can already zoom in it and uh, it will be the first look at the various stitching errors uh, that the, um, the program can do i already noticed it, this one it's a really small stitching error but actually uh, it's it's pretty good like there is uh, another one here which is also here so you i'm gonna just fix all this area and you can have a first look at the at the picture and at the various problems you can see here above there is there are the cut of the um, of the picture so you just have to click on autocomplete and it will autocomplete uh, like a, it's a kind of content aware feel from um, photoshop you can see that your picture has been field let's leave everything uh, in this we have 20k uh, resolution and uh, it's it's a really big image if you want to keep it in 20k it is possible just uh, there are no um, problems you can keep it but it will be a really big image and uh, i'm going to crop it in 16k because i want to upload it on Kula and the maximum resolution is 60k so i'm gonna put the 81 percent in this way i'm gonna have um, uh, 16k by i'm gonna leave the height in this uh, these settings because actually they are lower than I need uh, PNG or you can you can also use T but I'm gonna use PNG include alpha uh, channel export to disk and here you can choose the um, the folder where to save your picture this was the panel 3 if I'm not wrong save this will be uh, this will export the panorama and here we are so here we are, these were the, the original folder, and here we can see our 360 pictures. Okay, we can close Microsoft Eyes and turn on Photoshop. Import your picture, and here we are. Okay, first things first, you have to uh, fix the resolution of this. Of course, I'm working on Windows, but the process is the same for Mac. Um, press Ctrl, Alt and C, and you can fix the uh, resolution here. Choose pixels, and this is the resolution, horizontal resolution, which that will be this. I'm not gonna change the uh, horizontal resolution, but I'm gonna change, of course, the height because the aspect ratio has to be two by one. So the half of 16,174 is, yeah, exactly. Open the calculator or Alexa. Okay, so this is our resolution, but what we need is only the area above the drone. So we are gonna press this arrow here, so the center point will be uh, will be here, and the image will be like um, the resolution will be fixed uh, from this to above. So click OK, and we have this white area, uh, which is the um, the missing um, the missing part of the picture. Okay, we are gonna fill it and use the best friends of all, the, the best friend of all the photographers. Uh, edit content aware fill, of course. We are going to uh, area di campionamento. We are going to select, of course, only clouds. Okay, so here we are. It's uh, not not really. Uh, the top of the uh, the best of the jobs i mean okay we are going to take a look at the sky later because of course it has to be fixed since this part will be probably uh, the most problematic one or if it's really really too much work so here uh, is the probably the longest part of um, of the editing because you have to fix every single uh, mistake every single stitching issue stitching error um, of the picture so you have to zoom and take a look at everything you can see that here is uh, there is a stitching error what i advise you to do is to create two copies of the same level to eliminate the background level because you don't need it and uh, uh, at the, on the higher level select the area 
that you have to to fix select like a, um, a higher area Control t uh, which is the transformation perspective and then just zoom in and drag and drop the um, the area that have to be fixed okay as you can see it has been fixed more or less so then just use the um, the healing brush like in this way copy here past and that's it it's really easy to do this in this way and when you move it using the perspective um, the copy behind like uh, this layer of, uh, of the same image will feel everything above uh, because otherwise if you uh, take it um, if you don't create a, a background copy of it you will have this empty line that you will have to fill uh, using the content aware fill or the healing brush whatever uh, so I just prefer to do it in this way so the picture will be uh, the original so take a look at everything it will take a while to fix every single error but it does worth it so let's see at the end You will have to be careful about everything. First of all, of course, the horizon. Second, the streets, the roads, the road lines, the power lines, the buildings. Because, of course, it will be possible to have like a wrong roof, like I had it on uh, on this building. And as you can see, you would not even notice uh, anything. Uh, and you have to fix literally every single centimeter of your picture take a look everywhere take a look at this if there is something which has a particular shape uh, you will have to be careful about everything this will take more or less like th this kind of fixing in this way because it was the, the real probably the fastest way to do this um, it will take at least half an hour of your life if you have a, a really particular situation it will take also more it will take more or less uh, a hour of work but it will worth it because in this way if you zoom into the picture you will not see those differences i mean uh, for example you can take a look at this uh, right now and uh, you can zoom it a little bit and you would not would not notice anything but then zooming for example uh, here you can see uh, a cut let's say let's say that um, there is a cut because there is a stitching line and you do you want to fix it or you didn't see it you would say it's okay it doesn't matter because of course from here you would not even notice it but actually zooming it if you are really professional if you uh, really want to have the best picture and not just a good picture you will spend uh, the, those 30 minutes that hour to fix every single centimeter of this picture now that you have finished everything you now that you have fixed everything just select the both levels right click uh, merge levels or unify levels i don't know how is it in english and now there this is the part of the color correction what you can do is to uh, use camera uh, you go here filter and camera row to make the um, the, the editings uh, here without exporting the picture and you can edit it uh, like uh, with these values here using camera row and being still inside photoshop otherwise you can go on file save as and you can save it as a png or jpeg or whatever you want um, there should be also tiff yeah there's the tiff file and edit this picture using lightroom i don't want to tell you how to do this of course uh, everyone can um, has the own way to color create the pictures that's uh, your choice i'm gonna just uh, make a couple of editing here using camera roll to not have the um, the raw picture the the straight picture from the drone and um, but of course you are free to do whatever you want okay okay just a little bit of color correction and here we are okay now it's very important to uh, to fix the stitching line the seam line where you call it as you want it so right click duplicate the level and you have the the copy of this level so you have to drag and drop each level in one direction so you can have the 
stitch line here. Make them perfectly fit. Okay, just unify the levels. And here you can see the seam line. It is very visible, especially after the um, editing. Of course, let's not take a look here because of course we have to fix these clouds um, or just cover them. Uh, the seam line could be very visible depending on the editing. As you can see here, it's clearly visible along um, all the clouds. It will be uh, very visible, especially in uh, where there is two differences of color colors in fact as you can see here you couldn't even notice it because of the trees on the on the street here you can uh, it is not visible and continuing here you have to check all these vertical line um, to take a look at the at the seam line and fix it if you need to fix it if it's vi really visible in fact i'm going to i'm going to fix it here and uh, trying to fix this on this cloud of course i'm going to use the healing brush um, which is probably the fastest and uh, probably the best way to fix it i just have to copy and to do like this Okay, then we have the cloud. It's not that hard, like in this situation, to fix the seam line. It would be uh, a little bit harder in this situation here, because here uh, we had the auto fill with the um, content aware field. We can try to do this again, actually. Let's say from this point to this and like here. Um, let's try to use the content aware field to recreate a cloud and fill it with the, um, with the surrounding environment uh, to try to fix it because Otherwise, we'll have to uh, or cover it or to recreate it manually and it will take um, very much time. So I'm gonna just make a try and then, of course, we will have to see it in 360 because otherwise uh, we'll not be really able to, um, to see it for real. Actually, that, that's not that bad. Let's, let's say yes. Okay. Okay. This is this could be could be really interesting. Okay. Let's let's for now um, keep it in this way. Let's take a look at it in 360. To do this, we have to go in 3D panorama and new uh, new panorama level from the selected levels. Of course, you will have to select all the levels or you will have to merge them together into a single level because otherwise the changing you have made on a level, they are not made on the next level or on the previous level and you will see only uh, the level where you made changes and it could be, um, it could create a couple of problems. So here we are, we can take a, a look around, but let's first things first, um, uh, write one here and to have a more, more field of view. Okay, let's take a look. Of course, to do this, you will need a really good computer and a lot of RAM memory. Okay, actually, it's not that bad. Of course, here is really bad, but the rest of the picture seems, seems pretty good. Like, I don't see uh, where I made the editing, the various editing, for example, here. I don't see anything particular, anything bad. I can zoom in it. So it's, uh, it's really good. It's really good, but this is the problem. Let's try to use uh, maybe this view this way uh, and to fill it using the content aware fill uh, or try to copy and past uh, uh, some clouds to fill it in a good way because as usual in these cases but in the um, in all my 360 pictures i used to put my logo uh, everywhere 
so in the most of the case of course above if it's a drawn picture i put it at the zenith otherwise i put it at the nadir because in this way i can have the copyright um, sign or uh, copyright thing on my on my pictures but here let's let's try to to not do this let's try to have like a a full normal pictures feel content aware feel let's try to uh, to see how it works okay actually i thought it would be worse than this i have to be honest i thought it would be way worse than this and actually i could even keep it like there is there isn't the real reflection of the sun of this like uh, to to make it be believable i'd say uh, but actually okay I'm, I'm gonna keep it so we have to go back on the equirectangular view and uh, we can do this when my computer will load thank you uh, clicking here double click here spherical map uh, and you will see the equirectangular projection of the picture if you want to work in 360 you want you need a, a really a powerful machine so here we are that's it file save uh, save and i'm gonna save it in png i'm saving these pictures as a png because it is possible to work on png and upload them everywhere uh, and the png has less compression than jpeg and you will have uh, a little bit more quality okay and now the last part of the tutorial is the injection of 360 metadata because here we have a normal picture the aspect ratio is two by one it's a projection a rectangular projection of a 360 picture but it doesn't have 360 metadata so actually if you are going to upload this picture on facebook for example it will never recognize it at 360 and you will have only a flat picture so we open uh, the last program which is called exif fixer uh, you can find the tutorial about how to use exif fixer and how to inject 360 metadata on my website in description evenalchemista.com you can go and take a look i'm not gonna make the whole tutorial of this program right now so i'm just gonna inject these uh, metadata and um, set the north and that's all set north it more or less here more or less delete the original add metadata um, it will inject 360 metadata and here we are this is a final 360 picture um, made with Mavic Mini actually you can see you can take a look at it using GoPro VR player because since the aspect ratio is two by one it recognizes it at uh, 360 pictures um, and actually GoPro VR player recognizes every picture as, as a 360 uh, and here you can have a first look at your picture and look at this look let's zoom a bit look at this this is that, that that's really great and here we are, that's it, this is the way to take 360 pictures using the drone even if there is in the autom automatic mode uh, to take them. This guide is valid for everything, I use it my Mavic Mini to take these pictures, mm, but of course you can use every drone. Uh, thank you for watching, comment below with your 360 picture or if you upload them for example on Facebook you can tag me, uh, tag the page Ivan Alchemist so I can know that I have been useful and I would really like to uh, I would really appreciate to see your works, to see the places uh, of your town, of your surroundings. It will be really interesting. So comment below, tag me everywhere, subscribe for the next guides. Thank you for watching. See you.